No, let's be honest, scrolling through Netflix these days is about as rewarding as finding a pound coin down the back of your couch. It feels great in the moment, but you realise it still doesn't move you anywhere financially. Exactly. <laughs> that said though, I was sat minding my own business the other day when my wife decided to throw on yet another fairy tale based movie, and initially I rolled my eyes at the very prospect of sitting through 2 hours and 30 minutes of garishly arrogant storytelling with actors and actresses that fail to capture the imagination and wonder of this genre. As modern sensibilities believe what makes a good story should be presented as fiercely and egregiously one way as possible, rather than finding a perfect balance or simply providing audiences with a good time. Oh no. He's got a point. But to my surprise, Netflix managed to shit something out that embraces the nauseating themes and saturations that come from these types of movies, but presents it in a way that both mocks it and dissects it whilst managing to entertain you. Good job. In short, The School for Good and Evil is a decent movie. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? It's a story about two friends that have grown up together believing themselves to be nothing more than the archetypes placed upon them, only to realise they can become more or less of what they were destined to be, by virtue of the friction, friendship, love and hatred that they encounter along the way. Essentially, the classic beats that make up merely existing as another human being. It's all wrapped up in the world of fairy tale history, with the school's design designed to create the various princes and princesses, an assortment of villains that you've known from fiction and folklore, and documents the end of a centuries long rivalry between the sides of good and evil as they war over which one is best. It all makes sense now. While our intrepid heroes, if you will, undergo a transformation respectively that will subvert those preconceived notions of how we understand what it means to be a decent person, and one that possesses compromised values and moral corruptions when discussing the acts that could make someone truly good or truly evil. There's a genuine craft to this movie, and I'm not talking about the visuals or acting, though both ironically possess good and bad aspects, but in the way it's structured. To be honest, this is quite simply a tale about good and evil that gets you thinking, but doesn't insult your intelligence either. <laughs> while successfully being a straightforward enough viewing experience for younger audiences to get behind. Everything is almost thought-provoking and engaging, with double layers and deeper subtext that honestly makes the backbone of this for me. In an age as well where movies are driving passion and desire at the forefront of everything, this was refreshing to watch, as in it pretty much ignores those aspects you've come to expect, especially from movies that are presented with this genre in trying to find love. Instead, it takes a rather cursory glance in its direction that our protagonists choose to to leave behind and instead focuses and prioritises friendship. Oh, friend. If we're honest with ourselves, intimate relationships can teach us a lot about heart warmth and heartbreak and how to respect such a powerful feeling as love, whether or not you find the right partner, but platonic connections are the purest human connection that anyone else can find. Friendships often allow you to explore life and find yourself with little complication before settling down with one individual. Just the idea of having a companion next to you to lift you when you're down and ground you when you become too overzealous sticks with you. It's often the case that friendships are tested and can overcome just about anything as there's no deeper history beyond your experiences that created those bonds to begin with, and a platonic love that generally goes unspoken but can often be referred to as loyalty. No intimacy, no desire, just good memories with compelling moments. And if it blossoms into anything else and succeeds through life, then whoop dee! I've not read the works that this is based on, but if it is an adaptation and it's as well received as the scores say so, I'd say they hit a winner here, so fair play to all involved. Whilst it doesn't feel like a rich movie with narratively compelling aspects, at least for myself, with a bloated cast and bizarrely little time for anyone, with, as I mentioned, wildly outrageous colours and set dressing, it makes up for that in spades with the deeper message. At the centre of this little nugget is references to and examples of moral ambiguity, moral debate, integrity and intention, the cost of good and evil, the curse of love, selfish ambition and desire, impossible expectations and jaded realities. And these are just a few things that I could pull from this, but the way the movie operates is by having the good evolve from the misguided and the evil rise from ambition. The balance of good comes from selfless acts disguised as evil, so in this case with Agatha, she transforms into a dove to save Sophie, and later assists her in an act of finding true love, despite her never earning it. And let's not forget that she freed the young girl from the river to pass on peacefully, and the act of evil enacted for making Gregor a bony vulture for failing to meet the fantasised perception of good, already proves that one side isn't without the other, and really does get you questioning who has the better intentions with all this. 
More often than not, the evil is born by virtue of a person's environment, who they're around, how they're treated, what they believe, and what they understand as being truth and lies. Good is generally born alongside it, as it's never a quantifiable thing. Instead, it's what they choose to be that decides their destiny, but there's always room for change. To see the descent of Sophie was a fascinating take on a desire for good and how it can devolve into evil, and the acknowledgement that her frustrations with her situation led her to unleashing an unknown level of power, compared to that of Agatha's intentions and performance in response to this, which became the crux of this entire story. I find it hilarious that the removal of Sophie's hair, though, was the breaking point, but it's understandable to her character as well, as she allowed her vanity and self-indulgence to direct her selfish acts. For Agatha to become this more virtuous woman as a result for having nothing is a degree of right in the MCU to be comprised of. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. My only gripes are that of the music, the light side, and the villain. The movie loses respect for me somewhat as it uses pop culture music, like that of Sophie's vengeful entrance and the music from the embodiment of a fucking blue banana store. <laughs> The constant reminder as well of those in the light of the rules must be followed is a similar take on life for that of the clones with the good soldier follows orders spiel. Good soldiers follow orders. It's a concept that they keep beating over the head until I think one of the characters literally calls them out for how ridiculous it sounds. They're good ideas for structure but don't work in principle when their acts of kindness or obedience do nothing to stop genuine danger or support others. Evil acts as a balance and in a way is one side of your conscience talking with the other and allows you to make more informed decisions. So to try and segregate all of this was never going to work in the idea of these schools and incredibly this story rides the line of moral ambiguity as does its characters until Rafal comes in and makes things heavily one-sided to close us out. The ugly becomes reflected on the outside in this case, and Rafal wants to create this second coming in Sophie and essentially envelops her in self-loathing in a state of despair, which makes logical sense for a despicable mastermind to infiltrate the world once more. I mean, it's better than brewing your master in a fucking cauldron, am I right, Voldy? But it honestly, up to this point, removes that distinction that made this movie a step in the right direction for tonally appropriate stories that offers something richer for younger audiences to ponder on, rather than being distinctly one-sided. But in the end, Sophie's choice... <laughs> To save a friend and undo all the wrongs written is the best result for understanding what good looks like. And it may seem formulaic, but it's designed in a way that gets you thinking so you don't feel cheapened by the end. Nothing's clear cut or as black and white as you might believe. The craft of the story is brilliant and it all comes down to the idea of good can exist with evil and it's called being human. As we see throughout this, it's a variable and it comes down to choices, influences, decisions and relationships that could determine what we do. We all have the potential to go either way in life it's just how we choose to perceive things and act on them that puts us in a box. Regarding the quality of this title, yes, it falls short of the standard of acting we've grown to expect in a lot of cases, but I believe that to be intentional as well, with some of the ways that the characters are presented and the dialogue befits those moments too, however cringe-inducing they might be. Visually, this movie is a little hokey and rather intense with the cinematography and camera shutters, but still leagues better than half the shit Marvel has offered at this point. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. The casting choices were okay. To my understanding, a lot of them are Netflix stars, with only a few exceptions, with individuals like Kate Blanchett, Michelle Yeoh, and Lawrence Fishburne, who were dangerously underused in this. And the movie offers a genuinely complex tale of what it means to be virtuous and imperfect, with a side of maturity offered with nuance galore, and honestly, it's just a good time. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. I appreciate you stopping by, and I hope that you'll consider subscribing for more content like this. Remember to leave a thumbs up, and until next time everybody, take care, and I will see you soon.